Early next year we're getting in a new machine, but the current workshop layout really won't fit it in. After watching George Woodchop and Jay Bates Midasaur station earlier in the year, I came up with this, and that resulted in a fairly manageable set of cuts in the layout program I used. First, this project is all made out of melamine and MDF for cost reasons. Yes, three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood is a better choice for making cabinets that are rock solid, but that sort of plywood set me back at almost as much per sheet as the entire project. Secondly, I'm in the process of reviewing a track saw from Bosch, so this is a perfect project for this type of tool. So far, I'm digging the crazy dust collection. For each cut of the melamine, I'm doing a 2mm scoring cut first, then cutting all the way through. This results in a really clean cut on both the top and bottom of the board. If you only need one good side, you can skip the score and cut and just place the good side down and that will avoid tear out. The sheet I'm working on is sitting on top of a sheet of 6mm thick MDF as my wasteboard. This means I won't cut into the board below it. If you've got the in-feed and out-feed or a gigantic panel saw, all the sheets could be cut up the table saw. I don't, so using a track saw to break things down and then batch it out at the table saw is the best way for me. As Bosch didn't send along multiple tracks, I didn't have a long enough track for the saw to cut the long bench top, so I had to break out the Chapak track saw. If nothing else, the dust collection shows the difference between a budget and trade grade saw. However, I did still do scoring cuts with the Chapak saw, and that had a fair bit of chipping on the melamine. Once all the parts were cut, I could do even more batching out, as you can see, it goes super quick. Only two cuts were done at the Mitosaur, as the 1200mm trim was pretty trivial at a Mitosaur. Before I could start assembling, I needed to clear out the existing cabinets and tools that were just in the way. I'll be reusing the drawer slides and boxes, but nothing else just yet. Before assembling the cabinets, it's a good idea to apply edge banding. In my case, I'm on edge banding. While I have high moisture resistance melamine, edge banding makes it look nicer and adds a little bit more protection. The excess edge banding can be trimmed with a trim router, though this is a, the least proper way to do it as it rests on the edge. Many trim routers have an attachment so that the router can rest on the face, but unfortunately Makita have opted out to sell that in Australia. To give flexible storage, I'm using shelf pins. In Australia, you, we use 5mm shelf pins spaced 32mm apart, though I'm using 64mm spacing as I don't need that many options. This is the 32mm system, which I may go into another time. This is a close-up of how the jig works. It's a self-centering depth stop bit that has a 3 8 inch lip that lines up in the jig. This means that yeah, you could use a router with a 3 8 inch guide bushing. Cabinet carcasses are just screwed together. I started by putting one or two screws in each corner to hold it together, then tied it together with more screws. I don't have any melamine glue, but that would have made these a little bit stronger. To be honest though, with enough screws, once the backs are added, they're strong enough for the task. The top ties multiple cabinets together and distributes any downwards pressure onto the panels rather than onto the screws. The plinths are much the same, just a simple box screwed together to put the cabinets on. The large top I needed to accommodate a pillar in the garage so I scribed that out when it was in place. Using a jigsaw and melamine can result in disaster. So the jigsaw pendulum motion to low or off goes slowly but most importantly put the show side down. The reciprocating motion of the jigsaw tears the melamine on the up stroke.
The cabinet the Midas Hall will sit on is a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. It's also secured with a few more pieces of melamine. To add a little bit more strength to help prevent racking, I added it in a fixed shelf. I wanted it high enough that I could put the L-box and sustainer I have underneath. The MDF back is glued and nailed on. Backs like this add an amazing amount of resistance to racking, which prevents these cabinets from self-destructing. If you look at most bookcases, they can be really flimsy, but even a three millimeter MDF backer makes them very rigid. Originally, I was gonna order 18 mil melamine, but they are out of stock. As a result, I hastily updated my plans to 16 mm but I didn't account for the four mm difference when making the Minosaur cabinet, so it's a little bit underneath the height of the rest of the cabinets. Some shimming with washers fixes that fairly easily. For the drill press, a U-shaped top is needed to be created, so again, the jigsaw was used. There is no cabinet for the drill press, so cleats on the cabinets of either side of the drill press are added, and that's where the U-shaped top will rest. Again, the backs for all the cabinets are MDF, and that gets glued and nailed on. So the carcasses, the plinths, uh, the tops and some of the shells are all in uh, and I'm going to leave the video there. We haven't ordered enough material or draw slides to add in more drawers. Um, that was a conscious decision because of costs. Uh, at this stage the drawers were salvaged from the old cabinets uh, as well as the draw slides. The draw boxes were a little bit narrow so they just needed to be spaced out with some plywood spaces. Uh, we will be adding in a fence that will span the whole distance. It's about 3.4 meters, which is a lot of support, which is fantastic. Uh, as well as a shroud to go over the Midas saw. Great saw, but unfortunately terrible dust collection. But one of the main advantages is I don't need as much space as a lot of other saws would for a cabinet like this because it goes right up against the wall thanks to the glide arm on it rather than the standard rails. Now, it's been quite hot where I live. Uh, temperatures while I was doing this were about 38 to 42 degrees Celsius and unfortunately that's meant some of my edge banding hasn't been as good as what it could have been because I think the glue just took a lot longer to cool down and set and I was very impatient with trimming uh, so some of it just get a, get a bit dinged up. I may come back and add hardwood edging to it all later so it may not be all that much of an issue. Uh, for now, for what I've paid, I'm very happy with it. One thing that I didn't cover in great detail is the drill press. Uh, having that here means that on the far wall, I've cleared up a bit more space, which is great. So this panel here will always be removable. We may have a pin in it to hold it in position, keep it nice and square for other things. I don't know yet, uh, but that can be removed or can drill straight onto this. Uh, We'll probably make up a more average height table for drilling stuff. Then if that doesn't work, we can remove this table, remove the auxiliary table, and then use the table that comes with the drill press and just wind that all the way up. Because the fence of the miter saw will come out at probably 400 mil, it's just shy of that at the moment. Uh, we could even have some little cabinets on top here. Uh, perhaps really good storage for things like marking tools. Uh, they're very frequently used marking tools, so they're always on top. Like tape measures, pens, pencils, that sort of stuff. Um, perhaps all the charging equipment for various drills. In the description below, you'll find links to the plans, uh, which are the 3D model and the cut list, should you wish to follow along. Thanks for watching.